Hey guys, mm? don't you think it's amazing how Windic has developed over the few years? And it has developed fast. Yes, Dale, it's true. Like, where I grew up, things are developing so slow. I mean, after many years, there is now an Ackermann, there's a pep home, a Burman and Rock, ShopRite, and a Hungry Lion. <laughs> things are developing really fast fast yeah. here in Vinton. Mm -hmm. They've just recently built a very big mall just close to the stadium. What? We should go there after class. Oh, please guys, we right? should go. Yeah. You see? A big mall. <laughs> Winduk is constantly developing. We should definitely go there later. We totally should. Yeah, cool. Hi there. Here we have a group of students talking about development in Vinduk, how they can relate to it or measure that in their hometowns. So, welcome to our new learning series in development studies presented by NAMCO. In program one today, we look at types of development. Our lesson objectives after watching this program is that you should be able to explain what development is, identify the different aspects of development and how they affect your life, measure levels of development. Thanks for watching and enjoying the lesson with us. Development consists of a series of various processes of change and growth which a country or community goes through in order to achieve an acceptable standard of living. The aim is to make sure that all people in a country have a good quality of life with enough food, housing, jobs, health services, education, safety and security. Through these processes of change and growth, people are encouraged to improve their economic, social and political conditions. Sometimes development does not always happen in an equal way for all people in a country. In other words, development can be unequal and out of balance so that rich people or countries become even richer and poor people or countries become even poorer. There are an estimated 7.3 billion people alive on the planet today, of which approximately 1.3 billion live in developed countries, while the other 6 billion live in developing countries where many of them barely survive on less than 2 US dollar or less a day. The 1.3 billion who live in developed countries control 80% of the world's resources and the 6 billion only control 20% of the world's resources. Poor countries need money to develop and sustain their populations excelling educational and job requirement opportunities generating platforms to earn a steady means of living. People need to be supported to become more productive so that they can afford to pay for goods and services. More money circulates in the economy as people trade more. Any country is then in a better position to trade with other countries attracting more goods and services into the country to continue improving people's lives and conditions. built Grove Mall of Namibia. <laughs> wow, yeah. this is seriously big guys. Yeah. You know, I wish this kind of development could take place in my hometown. You know, it looks like it has a lot of different shops. Yeah, yeah lots of different shops. Do, do you guys see that big building over there? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. That is the Madame Puhamba Private Hospital. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of development has taken place in this area. Oh. Maybe we can go into the shops just now and have a drink or look at some shops. Mm. <laughs> but like, wow, guys, look at all these newly built flats around this mall. You know, I can remember a few years ago when there was almost nothing in this area. Me too. Like, you know, wow. th that like makes me wonder, like, how developed is our country? Yeah. I heard the World Bank lends countries money in order to help them develop. So they aim at giving everyone the basics, which are food, housing, jobs, health services, mm -hmm. education, safety, security. Mm. Oh. These basics are also known as development indicators or measurements and can be used to measure how developed a country is. My grandfather always says development needs to be sustainable. In other words, yeah, right. a country must be able to meet the needs of the population now 
as well as plan the country's growth and development for the future without creating problems for future generations. Mm, makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, it does, right? Yeah. I think that's cool. Mm. Economic growth. Imagine that the wealth of a country is like a pie. Economic growth means that the pie gets bigger as the country produces more wealth. But perhaps only a few people get to eat the pie and the majority of people only get the crumbs. This is not as fair as dividing the pie equally so that everyone gets a slice. In other words, economic growth can make some people rich while the majority remain poor. A country's wealth will not necessarily be divided equally among its people. Development involves more than economic growth, of course. For development to occur, economic growth is necessary. Otherwise, there will be no wealth for anyone at all. But ideally, development means that the wealth from economic growth is used to benefit all the people in a country. Social changes, improving people's quality of life. It is important for people to have their physical or basic needs met. For example, their need for food, water and shelter. So development must give people access to the provisions of these needs. People also need to have a healthy and happy life and they need opportunities for personal fulfillment. This requires things like good health facilities and educational institutions which are open to all. The wealth of a country is shared out equally. Political freedom. People also need freedom to choose their own way of life rather than have it forced upon them. Therefore, development should also involve political freedom, good government, just laws, the right to vote, the right to a fair trial, freedom of expression and religion, and equality before the law. Development further allows people to take part in decision making and to take control of their own lives in order to develop themselves. Conservation of the environment. Development should also include the conservation of the natural environment in which people live and the natural resources on which they depend. We influence and have an impact on our natural resources and they have an impact on us. So we should develop, improve and use these resources with care. Our air, land, water, vegetation and animal life. Conservation of the environment will add to people's quality of life, both now and the future, for generations to come. Come, guys, let's go to that restaurant and have a drink. Okay. <laughs> Anything to drink? Yes, please. We'll have only something to drink for now. Okay. I will have a Coke. And I will have a Sprite. And I will have a Fanta Orange. Okay. Thanks, eh? Coming right up. You know, guys, I'm still curious about development in Namibia. Like, how are we progressing? You know, I was searching the other day on the internet and found something where they say that since Namibia's independence in 1990, development has become a priority. Yeah, and various development projects have been introduced to help uplift the living standards of all Namibians and especially previously disadvantaged communities. Okay. You know, various senses have indicated since independence until now uh -huh. that many of Namibians still lived in poverty and a fast growing number in extreme poverty. You know, the unemployment rate is still really high. I will believe you if you say development had taken place. If I look at the availability of water and electricity in our town. Mm -hmm. hey, when people ask me about development in my hometown, mm -hmm. I always show them the school buildings. You know, I think this is a topic that will never exhaust. If I just see how many rural places have electricity in their housing. Yeah. You know, my father told me that cell phones only came into Namibia in 1994. <laughs> what? Yeah. But like, don't talk about the internet. I think development in this sector took such a major jump. Mm. Look, 
I'm even connected now to the Wi-Fi of this restaurant. Exactly. You see? Where's our waiter? Oh. Yeah, James. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Love Hunter. What's that? Enjoy, guys. Thank you so much. If you need anything else, call me. I'll be just right here. All right. <laughs> now, we take the difficult task of measuring development so that we can accurately talk about how a country changes over time and so that we can compare the development in different countries. You know, we've talked about all these different types of development, but how do you measure development? Development is measured by using indicators such as political indicators, mm -hmm. environmental indicators, mm -hmm. social indicators, and economic indicators. You know, I think development cannot take place without economic growth. So our first measure of a country's development is usually of its economy, its wealth and resources, right? Mm, that's right, Louisa. You know, a country's total wealth is called the Gross National Product. Oh. Yeah, the GMP uh -huh. is calculated by adding up everything the country earns and produces in one year, both inside and outside its borders. This includes goods and services. You know, I heard about something called the GDP. Ah, like, what's yeah, that all yeah. About? You see, that is when we deduct or exclude everything the country earns from outside mm -hmm. or abroad. You see, economic activities in the private sector, such as agriculture, mining, fishing, these are the main contributions to the GDP of Namibia, as with developing countries. And you see, this is a major reason why the GDP of a developing country is lower in value compared to the GDP figures of a developed country. Knowing the total GMP of a country is not very useful. Remember, development is about people, and these countries have different numbers of people to share the wealth. Firstly, the more people there are, the less there will be for each person. Secondly, what really matters is whether all people have a fair share of their country's wealth. The people in a country may not share equally in this national income. Let us tackle the first problem. To find out how much of the country's wealth the people have on average, we need to divide the total GMP by the number of people in the country. This is the reason why the most common indicator that is used to compare countries' levels of development is GNP per capita or GNP per head. This is calculated by dividing the total GMP by the number of the population of a country. This provides an average figure showing how much wealth each person in a country receives. There's another measure that one can use to measure a country's economic wealth. I know. Energy. Yes, right? that is correct. Cool. Wood, oil, natural gas, coal, and falling water are all sources of energy. Hey, mm. talking about falling water, I'm thinking about the hydropower station in Rakana. That's a typical example, my friend. Mm. They can all be used to produce power. The more developed a country is, mm -hmm. and the more industries it has, the more energy it will use. Mm -hmm. I wonder why this is so. You see, Luisa, mm -hmm. check. Actually, the more developed a country is, the more cars and trucks are used, oh. which need diesel or petrol, made from oil, burning coal, mm -hmm. or natural gas. See, that makes sense, which means industries mm -hmm. need machinery, and in turn, machinery needs energy to manufacture products. Exactly, Deo. You see, industries use machines directly driven by burning coal, oil, or electricity which can be produced from the power of falling water, a.k.a. hydroelectric power. Yes, yes, my dad told me the coolest thing. What? Apparently in developed countries, they use more electrical appliances like lights, mm -hmm. televisions and fridges. All these things require energy. Yeah. You know, that gets me thinking, do you think that energy can tell us more than GMP per capita about the way that the country's wealth is distributed amongst its population? No. no, I don't think so. Yeah, no. I mean, energy like GNP might only be used by a small number of people. Yeah. You see, another indicator 
is social indicators, which include employment, health services, infant mortality, life expectancy, health, education and literacy. Now, employment can be used to measure how developed a country is. People who don't have jobs cannot meet their basic needs yeah. without help from the state or mm -hmm. from their families. You know, now that you mention it, my father told me that people in the USA and the UK get money from the government for being unemployed. What? Like, isn't that super cool? Yes, but how can these countries do it? Because think about it, they're really developed and the employment rate is super high. Yeah, and then in developing countries like South Africa and Tanzania, the number of people without employment is very high. Uh, can I get you guys something to order? Um, yeah, you can get us the menu speakers. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, where were we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see. Another indicator of social well-being is basic needs. During the 1980s and 1990s, it became clear that for development to take place, people needed to have their basic needs fulfilled. Meeting those needs has become a priority. Remember that basic needs include clean water, enough food, adequate housing, proper health care, jobs, basic education and safety and security. The extent to which people's basic needs are met gives us a measure of a country's development. If the basic need of all the people are not met, then they will not live a good life. By good life, we mean that if they do not have clean water, enough food, adequate housing and proper health care, then they will not be able to work their very best and the country's production will suffer. Without basic education, people will not be able to take part in development. All the basic needs are equally important. I think health and education are the biggest basic needs and should have priority. No, no, you can't say that. I think food, water and shelter are the most important. I mean, come on, a hungry man is an angry man. <laughs> Teo, you know, I think what Luisa was trying to say is that health and education is easier to measure in terms of development. Exactly. You see, under health, you have life expectancy mm -hmm. and infant mortality. And under education, you have literacy, which includes reading and writing. Oh, then she must more say so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There are two common indicators used to measure the health in a country. The infant mortality rate. The number of babies out of every 1,000 who die before they reach the age of one year. Life expectancy. The average number of years a newborn baby can expect to live. The table shows the infant mortality rate of six countries. The table tells you that in Namibia, out of every 1,000 babies born each year, 55 die before their first birthday. Notice the difference between the figures for the African countries and those for Germany, a developed European country. As the table shows, the infant mortality rate in Germany is less than 10 per 1,000 babies. While in the African countries, 50 or more babies die before their very first birthday. In Zambia, the rate is more than 100. Developed countries like Germany have much lower infant mortality rates. What about Brazil? It is a developing country too, but it has a different infant mortality rate than South Africa. Life expectancy. One of the most useful measures of development is life expectancy, which shows how long a newborn child is likely to live. This is a good measure of the general health of the population. When the basic needs of the population are being met, people can expect to live for many years as opposed to when they are living in poverty and without adequate health care. The more a country develops, the longer people are likely to live. Let's look at life in the same countries we looked at before. We get another important indicator of a country's development when we look at the level of education in that country. See, people educate themselves as you are doing now because they want to understand things better and because they want to take full responsibility of their own lives. Education improves people's living conditions and makes things better for themselves and for their families. Literacy. Literacy means the ability to read and write. 
literacy rates show how many people can read and write. People who are illiterate cannot read or write. The table shows the levels of illiteracy in five countries. It shows the proportion or percentage of people older than 15 who cannot read or write. As you can see, in European countries like Greece and Portugal have much lower rates of illiteracy than Uganda, a developing African country where more than half of the population cannot read or write. Why is literacy important? If you are illiterate, then you have a good chance of getting a better job, which will raise your standard of living. The contribution that literate people make to the country's development is also important. The country will have skilled people who can do responsible jobs and can develop industries, hospitals, schools and universities. That's what I meant, Deo. Political indicators could be freedom and justice as well as war and conflict. Yes, and you know, we also get environment indicators. Exactly. Are you guys ready to order? Yes. Um, I think I will have the medium chips, please. And I will have a chicken enchilada, please. I'm still deciding, thank you. Okay, take it. Thanks. Why do you have to take so long? Like, I know there are a lot of options. Well, because, you know, all of this yeah, looks no, nice. No one has always been here. Exactly. <laughs> Don't you, like, have a regular? Sure but this is a nice place, me. guys. Yeah, I love it. <gasps> the atmosphere is awesome. And yeah. the drinks are really good, actually. Mm -hmm. The service is really good. I'd, I'd advise anyone to come. Louisa, mm -hmm. hurry up. But you want to eat? Wait, 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 just like, take forever now. Okay, all right, fine, fine, Should fine. Can I help you? No, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so let's make it. Okay, let's help it take something I'll, we can all eat from. Yeah. I'll take the, I'll take a sandwich. Which sandwich? Like a chicken sandwich. What's on it? Spicy chicken with red onions, herbs, tomato, and chili salsa. Okay, right? Viewers, I hope you've enjoyed our lesson presentation on types of development. Before we say goodbye, we must highlight some more important points about development and different ways to measure development. Development is a process of change affecting a society and giving people a better quality of life. But development does not always affect people equally and it can make some people worse off. Development involves several processes, which are economic growth, social change, political change, and conservation of the environment. There are different ways to measure development. The different aspects of development are economic, social, political, and environmental, which gives us some indicators to describe a country's level of development. But other aspects of development are very difficult to measure. And with that last bit of our advice, it's time for our SMS competition question of today. Please SMS us at 5003 and mention the keyword for this lesson, which is development. Then leave a space and type A, B or C for the answer you choose as correct. Each SMS costs 3 Namibian dollars. Okay, here's the question. Tell us which statement you think is correct amongst these three options. GNP stands for A, change and growth, B, mining, C, gross national product. Here's the question again. Tell us which statement you think is correct amongst these three options. GNP stands for A, change and growth, B, mining, or C, gross national product. Thanks again for taking part. The winner of this SMS competition will be announced within three days. And if it's you, we will soon contact you to come and collect your prize at a NAM call center near where you live. I hope you enjoyed watching and learning with us. See you again soon. Bye-bye.